Hi guys, welcome to my affordable watch collection. My name is Aviv and today we are going to take an in-depth look at a military inspired dive watch from a family owned micro brand based in the UK, the Cooper Submaster. We'll go over everything there is to know about this watch and I will also tell you what I think are its pros and its cons. This watch was sent to me from my good friend Adrian. He runs somewhere in Time channel here on YouTube. He reviewed the Submaster on his channel and I really liked both the review and the style of the watch. So Adrian offered to send it over to me so I can review it too. We agreed that when I send the watch back to him, I will add one of my watches for him to review. After he sent the watch over to me, he told me I should just keep it as a gift from him because he wasn't really wearing it all that much. I was of course completely blown away by this gesture. So go ahead and show Adrian some love and subscribe to his channel somewhere in time. I will leave the link for you in the description of this video. Besides this stainless steel version, the Submaster is also available with a black PVD coated case if you prefer that. And the solid stainless steel engineered bracelet is also available. Cooper watches are currently working on an automatic version of the Submaster that will look the same as this quartz powered one, except it will be powered by a Seiko NH35. It is available for pre-order for £149 on Cooper's website. I'll put the link in the description of this video for your convenience. They do make a couple more models that are worth checking out. A G10 inspired quartz field watch and an automatic submariner style diver, both at pretty affordable prices, just like this one that sells for just £79. The watch comes in this functional little travel case or travel pod. It's nothing much really, but it's very handy when you need to safely get a watch from point A to point B. Okay, let's take a closer look at the watch. The width of the case is 42 millimeters. Its thickness is 15.2 millimeters. The distance between the lugs is 20 millimeters. Lug tip to lug tip is 47. And on the supplied NATO strap, the watch weighs 87 grams. The dial is matte black. It has a white printed mini track on the edge of the dial. The indices are all printed on with luminescent material. We have double rectangles to mark the 12 o'clock, single rectangles for the 6 and 9, and circular indices to mark all other hours but the 3 o'clock, where we have a date complication window surrounded by a white printed frame. The date wheel itself is white as well, and the numbers are printed on it in black. Underneath the 12 o'clock marker, we have Cooper's name and cool logo printed in white, and above the 6, 1,000 feet or 300 meters, referring of course to the great water resistance this watch has. And beneath that, the watch's name, Submaster. The hands Cooper decided to go with for this watch are white painted and loomed gladiator style hands, a pencil minute hand, a broad sword hour hand, and an arrow seconds hand very similar to the handset found on mil-spec Rolex Submariners of the 1970s and others. The loom is okay for a watch at this price point, but it is by no means outstanding. It shines in a green light, and while the indices fade relatively fast, the loom on the hands is quite good and will last for a few hours. The compound Cooper watches used here is unknown. Covering the dial is a flat piece of mineral crystal, slightly protruding over the bezel. Whether or not it has anti-reflective coating is, again, unknown. The asymmetric case is made of 316L stainless steel and has a bead blasted finish on all of its surfaces, giving it a kick-ass stealthy matte look. It takes more than a few design cues from military divers of the 1970s and 80s like the CWC Royal Navy, and as a result, it has some very visually pleasing curves and angles. The lugs are positioned a bit all over the case back, 
and despite their slight downwards curve, that and the positioning of the spring bar holes might make the watch wear a bit tall. The crown on the 3 o'clock position is not signed, which is expected on a watch at this price point, but it would have been cool to have Cooper's logo on it. It has a little domed shape on its tip, which is the only thing that protrudes over the crown guards. It screws down into place and has some gnarling to help with the grip. Its bottom half sticks out beneath the guards, so they won't interfere when you want to screw the crown out and operate it. When you screw it out and put it to its first operating position, twist down to change the date, pull it all the way out to its second operating position, the second hand will stop ticking and you can change the time. The bezel is made of stainless steel as well, and it too has a blasted finish. It has gnarlings along the edge that provide good enough grip. The dive time bezel insert is made of aluminum and has markings on all 60 minutes, long lines and numbers alternating in 5 minutes intervals, and short lines in between. The 12 o'clock position is marked with a downwards facing triangle with a loomed peep on its center. It is a 90 click bezel that rotates unidirectionally. It has some freedom to it and some back plate too. Its alignment with the dial is also not perfect. The case back is made of stainless steel as well and screws into place. It has a polished finish on the edge and a radial brushing on top with the Cooper Watches logo etched in the center, the model's reference number beneath it, and on the very bottom, with no spaces for some reason, professional water protected, 30 ATM or 990 feet, that's the 300 meters of water resistance. The movement powering the Submaster is a Miyota 2115, a three-hander quartz movement with a date complication, accurate to plus or minus 20 seconds per month, with a battery life of up to three years. The watch comes on a simple looking black nylon NATO strap. It feels soft and limber, but also durable, with brushed stainless steel hardware held in place with strong stitches. On wrist, it wears quite good. It is by no means a small watch, and it sure takes some real estate on my 7-inch wrist, but I actually really like it. I love the rugged military look and the tool watch feel. The case is a bit tall, and sits taller yet with the added height coming from the NATO strap. That being said, I don't think it feels too bulky to the point it's unwearable for me, and you can take care of some of that height by putting the watch on a two-piece strap. Speaking of straps, and I feel I'm starting to repeat myself in the last few reviews, being a black dial diver, this watch is pretty much a strap monster, and looks great on many different straps. The original NATO is good enough, it is strong and comfortable. The watch is very legible too, there's no problem telling the time with these bright colored hands against the matte black dial. So what do I like about the Cooper Submaster and what don't I like? Let's start with my dislikes, the cons. The two main downfalls of this watch are the operation of the bezel, there's just too much freedom there, and the mineral crystal, which is more prone to scratches than sapphire crystal is, but completely understandable at this price point. The loom on the indices could be better too, but again, this is a sub $100 watch, and you can't really expect it to be much better than this. And just like every time I review a quartz piece, for some people a quartz movement is a deal breaker, but I don't really mind it. I think every collection needs to have a few quartz pieces you can trust to be ready to grab and go. But to those people I want to remind that an automatic version is in the works and you can pre-order it on Cooper's website. Now for the pros. I am an army man and I find the military aesthetics of this watch very appealing. 
Cooper watches drew a lot of inspiration from the military divers of old and managed to make a good looking diver that pays homage to those watches without actually flat out copying them. I really like the design of the case and dial. I think those are done very well. And I love the bead blasted finish of the case too. The affordable price is another plus. A well designed 300 meters water resistant dive watch for under $100 is kind of hard to beat without going the Chinese special route. For £79, this is not a premium product, it is by no means a perfect watch, and in some areas it leaves a bit more to be desired. It might struggle to compete with some of the Specs monsters coming in from China these days in the same price category. If I could give my two cents to Cooper watches, it is to pay more attention to the small details, even if it means having to raise their prices a little bit. I think it will be worth it in the long run, because this is a really nice watch, with the potential of being a great one. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of the Cooper Submaster by dropping a comment below. If you want to check it out for yourselves on Cooper's website, I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Please do go ahead and check out Somewhere in Time YouTube channel, you'll find the link down in the description as well. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Adrian again for his friendship and of course for sending me this watch. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my affordable watch collection and hit the notification bell for more affordable watches related content. You can also follow me on Instagram and get to know me and my collection a little better, get all the news about the channel and connect with me on a more personal level. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy one of these two as well. Here's a quick link to Adrian's review of the Submaster. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.